Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, because I did a TBR for June, I have been participating in the Olympics readathon and I think sticking to the TBR pretty well. I wanted to continue to try to do at least a little bit of a TBR because I think it does help provide some direction uh, and maybe set some expectation for all of you who are watching in what I'm going to be covering in the time coming up. Now, I have found even with the June TBR, I have wanted to shift things in and out because of how I'm feeling. So I thought instead of doing a TBR for each month, maybe I'll do a seasonal TBR. I've seen some people do those and it seems to work out fairly well. So I wanted to give you all an indication of what I am going to be reading over the course of the summer. So I have a collection of books that I have on hand that I'm going to talk about and then a couple of books that I'm going to be reading on my Kindle and a few of the new releases that are coming out in July that I'm really excited to read. What I also wanted to give was an opportunity for anybody who likes following along with the channel and has a particular book that they want to hear about, feel free to comment that down below. And if there are a lot of people who would love to see the same things covered, then I will try to pick those books up over the summer as well. Just keep in mind that there's going to be some switching in and out. Um, I'm talking mainly about fantasy, but there'll be some other books that I'm throwing into the TBR as well. But I'm always happy to hear from you, and I'm curious to know what people want to see on the channel. Is it the really popular books? Is it some, some books that don't get talked about as much? I'm not really sure. But we will get into the TBR, and I'll talk a little bit about the physical books that I have on hand. So the first book that I'm going to put up is The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buhlman. So this is a new release that just came out in May. Um, and I am putting it on the video first because I may end up getting to it in June. I switched around some of the prompts. So even though this wasn't on my June TBR, it's still a book that I think I may be reading this month or it may slip into that kind of June into July transition couple of days. But I do want to read this really soon because I would like to put together a video for all of you um, talking about the, the fantasy releases from January to June 2021 so I can give my opinion about which ones I felt were the most worthwhile, what you should boost to the top of your TBR and which ones maybe could take a little bit of a backseat for a short while. So would really like to get to that one soon. Book number two I have talked about before on the channel, and that is The Winter King by Bernard Cornwell. So this is a historical fiction, actually, and this is a retelling of Arthurian legend. I love uh, Arthurian retellings, and this is one that has been on the TBR for quite a while, uh, and I'm really, really looking forward to picking that up. So I have decided that I am prioritizing that series and will definitely be picking up the first book this summer. Like I said, this is more of a historical fiction angle rather than a, fan a fantasy angle for King Arthur, but I've heard nothing but spectacular things. I know this was a big influence for John Gwynne uh, and his writing, so looking forward to that aspect as well. I'm expecting some really good fight scenes, really good combat, and I've heard that the character work is exceptional as well. Next, uh, this is a non-fantasy selection, so I would like to read Things Fall Apart, which I had on my five-star predictions video, and I can link that one if anybody is new to the channel and they haven't had a chance to watch it. Uh, but this is a work of literary fiction. It often makes the best 100 books of all time lists. It's very short, as you can see, so I don't think it will take much time for me to go through, even though I tend to read literary fiction a little bit slower because I really want to absorb the story. I really want to understand what the author was going for, um, what they accomplished with the book, instead of just, um, you know, being along for the characterization or the plot. So I do do a little bit more of thinking about the themes when I am reading literary fiction, and I am looking forward to that one as well. Next is a, a double, a book, two books together. Uh, so I ordered these books a little bit earlier this year. So the first one is um, The Elric Books by Michael Moorcock. So I don't know, uh, I think it's just Elric of Mel, Melna, Melnabone, Melnabone, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Um, I think it's just that first book along with some short stories in this bind up. 
these books are really complicated to try to figure out where to start, what to read first. If anybody is a big Elric fan and they have suggestions, or if you've read this bind up specifically and you think I should read the book first and then the short stories, or if you have any idea how I should organize that, then please let me know. If not, I'll flip through and I'll kind of figure it out on my own. But I wanted to get into the Elric saga after hearing about this book. So this is called Wizardry and Wild Romance and it is called A Study of Epic Fantasy and it was edited or compiled by Michael Moorcock I believe along with one of his friends. They put it together um, and there's a new introduction by um, China Mieville at the front. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. I have heard about Michael Moorcock's literary critique, about his fantasy critique, and I know that he has very strong and particular fantasy opinions. I have his list of top 100 fantasy novels of all time in a notebook, and I think I've only read like 10 of them, which I've been reading fantasy for a long time, and usually on those lists, the percentage of books that I've read is a lot higher. But there's a lot of what I would consider to be obscure fantasy, but for some people I'm sure it's probably right at the top of their radar. But things that I definitely had, hadn't heard of or don't hear a lot about and hadn't read. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. So I'm hoping to do these together to read his literary criticism of fantasy and then also his um, Elric, at least his first Elric book, and do a review of those together. So I can talk a little bit about Michael Moorcock, about Elric, and then we'll see where we go from there. So I'm really looking forward to that. That is the kind of um, like nerdy assignment that I have set myself that I am really excited about. So I don't know, that might give you a little bit of uh, <laughs> indication of what I find fun. Uh, but yes, I'm looking forward to putting that on my summer TBR as well to hop out of fantasy again for a moment. I recently got John Green's new work of nonfiction, which is called The Anthropocene Reviewed, which is just um, that the Anthropocene is our geological age. And John Green has written, I think, a collection of essays that describe what it is like to live in the world today. I really liked his young adult novels back, um, you know, I think it was probably like, 10-ish years ago that most of them were put out. I think The Fault in Our Stars is, oh no, he wrote Turtles all the way down. Maybe that one came out in like 2016. So maybe it's been like five years since he released a work of fiction. But I have always enjoyed his writing. I find his style very easygoing. He seems to be um, a very genuine person who has a lot to say and a lot of opinions about the world. So I thought that this would be a good selection for one of my summer nonfiction picks. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope that it's good. I haven't really been keeping up on like his YouTube channel or his podcast. I think some of these essays are recycled from that material, but I haven't really kept up on what he's doing. So it should all be new information for me. And I like to get a work of nonfiction or two in a month. So looking forward to reading that one as well. Uh, if you've watched one of my most recent videos about the Wheel of Time called Why Not and Why Now, outlining some of the reasons that held me back from reading the Wheel of Time and some of the reasons that I'm excited to get into the series, I will definitely be picking up The Eye of the World, book one um, in the Wheel of Time this summer. So I'm really looking forward to that. I would say equal parts nervous and excited because even in the comments on that video, you have some people who are really passionate about it and some people who feel like they just couldn't get into it. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to let go of this series. I don't think that I'm gonna feel, and I know that this is a silly way to feel and you know, feel free to point that out, but I don't feel like I will believe that I have accomplished something unless I finish it all the way through. And that's just, you know, a negative personality trait of mine. I want to see things all the way through, even if I'm not totally enjoying them. So I think I will do this whole series. I will read it, you know, whatever amount of time that it takes me. But I really hope that I enjoy it because if I don't enjoy it, then I won't feel like really making videos about it. And I would like to be able to make some videos about it. So hoping that I really enjoy The Wheel of Time and I am definitely going to read at least book one this summer and then continue on with the rest throughout the end of this year and into next year. The second to last uh, physical book that I have is Juliette Marillier's Daughter of the Forest. So this is, 
I think historical fantasy, a fairy tale retelling. Um, I know Jolene over at Jolene Reads, this is her favorite book of all time and I really love her reading taste. I will link her channel below as well because I think that is fantastic and I really really like historical fantasy and she likes Pippin's hairs get everywhere. <laughs> uh, she really likes the same kinds of books that I like so I'm looking forward to reading this so much. I have really high hopes for this book. Not from her, no pressure for her and her channel but just it seems like the kind of book that I would really love, so I am really hopeful that I am going to love it. The last book on my physical TBR, I forgot to take off the bookshelf before I started filming, so I'm not gonna pause to do that, but you probably can see it back. Oh, actually, I can reach it from here. So that is Best Served Cold. I've been talking about how much I love the First Law trilogy for so long, and for some reason, I haven't gone on to read the standalones. And I don't know why. That's just the, you know, my reading mood carries me to many places. And, and you, not, you know, not always the places that are best for me to go. So I am making it a priority to read Best Served Cold this summer, but probably in July. I'm hoping that this is going to be one of the first books that I pick up after this June Olympics readathon is over. So... I really want to read the standalones and then get into the next series set in that world because I have so enjoyed my time there. I really, really like Joe Abercrombie's writing and I, I just really want to read them. So hopefully I can get to that as quickly as possible and then make my way through the rest of the standalones and on into the next series. But those are all the books on my physical TBR that I want to read this summer. I have a couple books on Kindle that I want to continue with. So I have recently started rereading The Dresden Files. I read book one, Stormfront, 10, 15 years ago. Didn't really love it. Hadn't really heard a lot about it. So unlike now where I have a lot of people, I can watch a lot of people on booktube who say, you know, the first couple books can be a struggle, but you have to power through and it gets so good and I love it and people love the series. I didn't have that. I just picked it up, thought that it was okay, not horrible, not great, forgot about it and didn't continue. But I reread the first book earlier this year and then this month um, I have read books two and three. And with both book three especially, I felt my interest in the series and the characters really picking up. So I'm hoping to read some more Dresden this summer. These are really easy books to get through. You know, if I'm <clears throat> out at the park with the kids and they're running around, they're easy ones to read through while also, also watching over them, read at the side of the pool, read at the beach. So I think they're a good summer book to pick up and I'm going to continue along with that series on Kindle. Uh, another book that I'm going to pick up on Kindle is the first book in the John Shano series by David Gemmell. So I have been wanting to read more David Gemmell since I read Legend earlier this year and really enjoyed it. And one of the people who watches my videos and, and comments regularly uh, has recommended that I read that series because there are some interesting uh, parallels to the Dark Tower series, which is one of my favorite book series of all time. So I'm going to start there next for David Gemmell. I know the Regante series is one of his most popular and one that people really love. But I think I'm going to jump in with this one first. I think the first book is called Wolf in Shadow uh, because I like that post-apocalyptic Western flair to fantasy as well. So I'm going to pick up that one on Kindle this summer and hopefully will really enjoy it. So that's just a couple of the Kindle selections. Uh, usually what happens is I see books on a Kindle sale or I hear someone mention something and I'm not sure if I wanna buy the whole series, so I'll buy the first one on Kindle. So I'm sure I'll be reading more on Kindle over the summer, but those are just a couple of the things that I already have lined up that I want to read. And then finally, I'm looking forward to some of the July releases. Three new releases that are coming in July that I'm particularly excited for um, is the conclusion to Rainbow Rowell's Simon Snow series. The third book is called Any Way the Wind Blows. It's a YA fantasy series. This is the last book. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And then other than that, I would really like to read the book. I think it's called... Um, what is it called? Half, Half Sick of Shadows. Yes, because it's a line from the Lady of Shalott. So Half Sick of Shadows, which is another Arthurian retelling that focuses on the character of Elaine, who is the character who is locked away in the poem, The Lady of Shalott. So I... 
I'm very interested to see what this is going to be like. I really like Arthurian retellings. This one is from the point of view of one of the side characters. That is a very beautiful and haunting poem. So I hope that the book is also beautiful and haunting and I'm really looking forward to it. I, I really hope that I enjoy it because I've read some really good King Arthur retellings. I've read some really not so good King Arthur retellings. So <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. And then the final uh, new release that I'm really excited for is She Who Became the Sun, which has been one of the most hyped fantasy releases for 2021. Uh, people have been comparing it or kind of saying that it is a combination of Mulan and The Song of Achilles. Mulan is my favorite Disney movie. The Song of Achilles is one of my favorite books ever. I'm not sure that this book can live up to the hype. I I don't go into books feeling overhyped very often, but I do have some concerns that I may be overhyped for this one. I really hope that it lives up to those expectations, but I will definitely be picking this one up. Actually, I think I pre-ordered it. So as soon as it arrives at my house, I will likely be starting it. And I know that Patrick enjoyed it, so hopefully that means that I will enjoy it as well. But that is the summer TBR for 2021. Like I said, if there are any books that you would love to see me pick up on the channel, if there's anything you would love to hear me talk about, please let me know. There's still considerable room on this 2021 TBR because I'm, I'm kind of treating this as July, August, and September. And I usually read around 10 books a month. So that leaves some wiggle room for me to put some books in, take some, I'll probably end up taking some books out. Uh, but if there's anything you're really excited to see me read, review, chat about, then please let me know. And I hope everybody has a great day. I will see you with another video soon. Bye.